Oh wait, let's go to the other section here. So shave biopsy of a very darkly pigmented lesion, but a very discrete lesion from low power. You can see it starts right here, nothing beyond, and it stops right here. It's like a very discrete. And clinically, this would have been a dark, like black spot that was sharply circumscribed and not very large, probably on the extremity of a young adult woman. That would be like the classic clinical stem in a, in a test question if I were making one. But, you know, they can sometimes be other spots. And um, darkly pigmented melanocytes. The melanocytes are plump spindle cells in kind of large nests that are kind of hanging down or raining, raining down from el the epidermis with the el elongated kind of reedy in between them. And we can't, unfortunately, the scan's a little out of focus. We can't really see the cytology. They're plump, kind of larger, but relatively uniform. They all look the same. They have grayish cytoplasm with a fine pigment and then a band of densely pigmented melanophages histiocytes with melanin, not melanocytes underneath them, which is classic. And the pigment may also be prominent in the epidermis. So this is great for a pigmented spindle cell nevus, uh, also known as Reed's nevus after Dr. Um, Richard Reed, who described it. And um, uh, the, sometimes these have vertical orientation of the nest, in which case they can be described as kind of bunches of bananas. And that same terminology has been used for, um, for Spitz nevus, because sometimes pigmented Junctional spitz nevus can have a lot of overlap with pigmented spindle cell nevus of reed, and some people have proposed that they are the same thing or two flavors of the same thing. I, I certainly think there's a lot of overlap between a, a junctional spitz nevus and a pigmented spindle cell nevus. Okay. Um, the uh, the other thing though is that sometimes the melanocyte nests can be or <laughs> horizontally oriented and go reedy to reedy, in which case they can really look similar to this plastic nevus. And then the cells are kind of plump and big. So you might be tempted to say, oh, moderate or even severe dysplastic nevus because they're kind of larger uh, plump cells. So I feel like uh, recognizing the very sharp circumscription, the band of pigment underneath, the kind of uniform um, cytology, is good for pigmented spindle cell nevus of reed. And uh, um, <clears throat> these are benign, but sometimes if they're transected, people will biopsy them. I feel like most of the time on a shave, you can see both sides because they're small and they're easy to shave underneath. Um, if it's a big lesion, then you got to be really careful, okay, about that. And I am not, I, I feel like uh, occasional pagetoid scatter in the middle of these is really common, just like over top of Spitz nevi. Uh, I feel like it's pretty common to see pagetoid, uh, some pagetoid scatter. And if the lesion otherwise fits nicely for, for a, pigmented spindle cell nevus, I have no problem with that. I feel like I'd see that in, I mean, majority of these, honestly, to see occasional pagetoid scatter. So that does not bother me. I do not want to see single cells trickling out at the edge. That would make me nervous. So pigmented spindle cell nevus.